so far. So far in our discussion on the quantum mechanical theory of the atom, we spoke about the simplest type of atom, namely the hydrogen atom. Now the hydrogen atom only has a single electron in its neutral state. And that means in its ground state, it's very easy to tell where that electron will go. So in the ground state of a neutral hydrogen atom, the electron will go into the most stable and lowest in energy quantum state that is given by the following three quantum numbers. So the principal quantum number n is equal to 1, the orbital quantum number L is equal to 0, and our magnetic quantum number ML is also equal to 0. Now because we're only dealing with one electron, there's really no need to specify the fourth quantum number, the spin quantum number. But let's suppose that the spin quantum number is positive 1 half. So these are the quantum numbers that specify the electron in the ground state of the hydrogen atom. Now let's suppose we go to the next atom that has one more proton, one more neutron in the nucleus and one more electron surrounding that nucleus. Namely, let's suppose now we're dealing with helium. The question is, we have one extra additional electron and where should that that electron go? How exactly do we tell into which quantum state we put that electron? So whenever we deal with more complex atoms that have many electrons, it becomes difficult to know which electron goes into which orbital. A rule that was invented by an Austrian physicist by the name of Wolfgang Pauli that became known as the Pauli exclusion principle basically helps us determine into which orbital we can place any given electron. So what exactly does this principle tell us? Well, it states that each individual electron in any given atom has a unique set of four quantum numbers that describe the quantum state of that electron, the location of that electron around the nucleus of that, uh, that atom. So that basically means if we take any two electrons within any given atom, those two electrons can never have the same set of four quantum numbers. Where the quantum numbers are the principal quantum number, the orbital quantum number, the magnetic quantum number, as well as the spin quantum number. Now the question is, where exactly does this exclusion principle come from? What is the basis of this principle? So the basis of the Pauli exclusion principle principle lies in the fact that every electron carries an intrinsic negative electric charge. And this means that electrons that are found very close to one another in the same quantum state, the electrons that are in close proximity will repel one another as a result of electric charge, as a result of those two identical electric charges. And this will lead to an increase in energy and decrease in stability of our electron and our atom. And this basically means that electrons naturally want to be as far away from one another as possible as to decrease that electrostatic repulsion. So the Pauli exclusion principle has its basis in electrostatic repulsion between our two electrons which have the same identical negative electric charge. Now the Pauli exclusion principle doesn't only only work for electrons, but it also works for protons and neutrons. In fact, the Pauli exclusion principle basically works for particles that we call fermions. So the Pauli exclusion principle only works for particles such as electrons which have a spin that is one half of an integer. For the electron, the spin can either be positive one half or a negative one half. 
half. Now other particles exist, such as photons, that don't quite have this spin. And we can't apply the Pauli exclusion principle to particles such as photons. So let's now look at the following example to see what the Pauli exclusion principle actually tells us. So we want to determine the quantum state for every single electron within the ground state of our boron atom. So in its neutral state, boron has five protons, five neutrons in the nucleus, and five electrons somewhere around that nucleus. The question is, where exactly are those electrons? So basically, here we have the following table that gives us each one of these quantum numbers. So we have the principal quantum number n, the orbital quantum number l, the magnetic quantum number ml, and the spin quantum number ms. And this column basically describes the number of our electrons. So the first electron, second electron, and all the way down to the fifth electron. So let's begin with the first electron. So in the, uh, so the first electron can basically go into the 1s orbital. So the principal quantum number is 1, the orbital quantum number is 0, the magnetic quantum number is 0, and our spin of that electron is positive 1 half. Now the next electron, according to the Pauli exclusion principle, cannot be found in the same close, uh, close proximity of this electron. It cannot have the same quantum quantum state. So that means we have to change this quantity to a negative one half because any given orbital can host a maximum of two electrons. So that means for the second electron we have n equals 1, l equals 0, ml equals 0, and ms equals negative one half. So these two quantum states are different because they differ in our spin quantum number. Now the third, fourth, and fifth electron go into the following quantum state. And notice that every single one of these quantum state differs from the other one as in accordance with the Pauli exclusion principle. So once again, notice that each one of the five electrons corresponds to its own unique set of four quantum numbers. This is in accordance with the Pauli exclusion principle. So we will never find, or there's a very low probability that we will find two electrons in the same quantum state with the same four quantum numbers. Numbers.